Hi guys, my name is Tiffany and welcome to episode four of season four of Tiny Tips with Tiff where I teach you skills in the NICU. So this last video that we're gonna be discussing is going to be going over how to give a sponge bath in the NICU. the video that I've done in another season of Tiny Tips with Tip where I teach you guys how to give a regular tub bath in the NICU and baths are a little bit challenging in the NICU just because we have a lot of things going on with our patients. We have wires, IVs, all that stuff and so it's way different than giving just a regular bath to a newborn baby at home and so I wanted to create this video so that way you guys can help work around it especially trying to plan it out when doing your assessments and doing your cares and so I've definitely done a video already where I've showed you guys how to do a regular tub bath in the NICU but I wanted to share with you guys on how to give a sponge bath and so why we give sponge baths in the NICU is for a variety of reasons, but the most important thing though is just depending on your patient's diagnosis. So we have some patients that are very unstable, so they can't be taken out of bed to do a regular bath, so we'll do a sponge bath. We also give sponge baths to our very premature patients just because they need to be in the isolates because they don't maintain their temperatures well outside of it. So we like to do the sponge bath just because we're able to keep them inside the isolate, keep them nice and warm, and they're just too small to be able to fit in a tub. So so we just do a sponge bath for them too. Um, other reasons why we give sponge baths is patients that have IVs. So if they have IVs or pick lines, we do not want to get those wet because there's a potential um, possibility of their dressing getting wet and then we're gonna have to change that and that leads to infection. And so we like to do sponge baths just so that we can keep that part of their body dry and we just wipe in other areas. Um, we also have patients too that aren't able to just receive tub baths. For example, if they have any surgical procedures, they have any dressings or anything like that, that we can't have wet, then we will do sponge baths. So sponge baths are some things that is easy, but at the same time, very challenging when you have a patient in the NICU and they have a lot of stuff going on. So I definitely wanna share with you guys some of my tips and tricks on how to do a sponge bath in the NICU. So I hope you guys enjoyed this season so far and I really enjoyed making this season for you guys. Let me know if you guys want a season five of Tiny Tips with Tiff and what you want to see and that way I can make those kinds of videos for you guys. So make sure to leave it down in the comments below and stay tuned for this video. All right, you guys, so I'm gonna be showing you how to do a sponge bath. This is my patient in her crib slash bed. This is a scale that we're gonna pretend is a scale and I'm gonna be showing you some of the supplies that you'll be needing. So I like to grab two washcloths. Um, I also like to grab a big towel and then this is my chucks pad. I don't have one right now, but this is kind of like a waterproof pad, a chucks pad if your hospital has it. If not, you can just use another bigger towel. Um, I like to grab clean linen that I'm gonna be changing her um, dirty bed with and then also soap and a large basin. So these are the supplies that you'll be needing. So what I like to do um, while my patient is in her crib, prep my supplies. And so what I like to do is grab a chucks pad and put it on my scale. And then that way when I weigh my patient, I can just do the bath on the scale. Um, so what I like to do here is I'll make sure on my patient to remove any excess things that is not necessary. So like the BP cuff, I don't need. I'll take the pacifier out so it doesn't fall on the floor. And if your patient is unstable, you can keep the leads on and then just change it out for another one. That way you can continuously monitor your patient during the bath. But if your patient's stable enough, you can take it off, but it is stuck on my patient, so I'm just gonna leave it on her. And the most important thing for her is the IV that we're gonna try to keep dry. Um, an OG can get wet and that's totally fine, but the IV is the most important thing that we're gonna wanna keep dry. So after you change her diaper and put on a new one, we're gonna be weighing our patient. So what I like to do is I will grab my patient, put a um, fresh diaper on here and zero out my bed, and then I will take the diaper off and weigh my patient. And then I'll grab my weight. And once my patient is on the scale, I like to prepare her bed and make sure it's ready. So that way when I'm done with the bath, I can just transfer her back. So I like to take off the dirty linen and you can just toss it on the floor. And then I will grab her new linen and just place that on her bed. And that way it's ready to go when I'm done with my bath. And then I like to grab a large towel and put it on top of her fresh linen. And that way when I'm done with the bath I, and when I transfer her over, if she's still a little bit wet, at least this can help dry her off and I'll use this to dry her off as well. So after filling my basin with water, I also have my soap here. I would like to grab um, one 
washcloth that I will put into the basin and one that I like to use on top of my patient so that way they don't get too cold. And so usually I usually will start off with the face first. So I'll grab my clean washcloth with just regular water and I'll clean the eyes in and out and flip the towel and clean in and out. That way you're not contaminating their eyes. Um, and then I'll just clean the rest of her face, her cheeks, under her chin, her forehead. And then that way we got the clean part of the body um, clean. And then now we'll get to the other parts of the body. Um, I will pour some soap on her hair. And then I like to just dip my um, towel into the water and just clean off her head, get it nice and soapy, and then just rinse it off with just regular water. And once that's nice and dry, I can take this clean washcloth and just wrap her head around it and just kind of dry off some of her hair and I'll just keep that on there so her head doesn't get too cold and then we'll just work with the body um, so I like to keep the diaper on for the bath um, for part of the bath until I'm ready to clean her privates but right now I like to keep it on just so that they don't pee everywhere when we're doing a sponge bath so like I said the most important thing to keep dry is her IV in her hand so we will clean everything else so what I like to do is I'll grab the washcloth that's in there and I'll pour some soap on it and then I kind of just rub her body get under her armpits on her chest avoid that arm and I'll do her legs clean on her feet and do that and then it's important to turn your baby to the side and clean their backs and then also flip to the other side and clean the back as well and then the last thing I like to do is do their bottom so I'll clean the inside of this get her butt nice and clean. And then with the same washcloth, I just rinse them off by just wringing the water on her body, avoiding that arm, just wringing it with water just to get all the soap off and then turning to the side and then turning to the other side. And then that's it. I'll take the dirty diaper off and then we'll just transfer our patient back to the bed. And this is where I just do my full drying off on the bed making sure she's nice and fully dry. And then right away, I usually like to put on a clean diaper and put it on my patient so they don't pee everywhere. And once they have a clean diaper on, then I can put fresh new leaves on or tr take off the old ones and put on new ones if your patient is unstable. That way they have fresh leaves that are not wet and then just drying off any excess and that's pretty much it. So that's usually how I give a sponge bath and like my process of doing it all. That way it is just all more cohesive and you're not going back and forth, back and forth. You can always do the sponge bath in their bed too. And that way it's just in one place, especially if your unit doesn't have a scale um, that is available for everybody, then you can always do it in the bath. Just make sure to put excess chucks pads or um, towels so you don't get your bed all wet. But yeah, that's how I like to do a sponge bath. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of how to do a sponge bath in the NICU. And hopefully I was able to share with you guys some tips and tricks on how to care for a patient that just has a lot going on, how you're able to still clean them um, in the NICU. So hopefully this video was helpful and I hope you guys enjoy season four. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. Cards and